gonna take a look at this video that says a woman was rejected by a matchmaker. Now I'm no matchmaker myself, but you got uh, something's got to be pretty wrong with you in order for you to be rejected by the matchmaker. That's like a doc that's like being too sick for a doctor, and the doctor the, decides to quit and just send you to another to see a different doctor and see how it is. Rejected by a matchmaker this wow. week. She wouldn't no be able to work with me. When we met, I told her what I was looking for and told mm -hmm. her a lot about me. And mm -hmm. I tried to highlight some of my core qualities, including the fact that I'm very, very type A organized. I like to be the leader. I told her the types of things that I like doing. I also told her I was looking for a man who was also a leader because I don't want to always be the leader, believe it or not. I told her I was looking for Okay, so when it com when it comes to looking for another leader while you being a leader, that's going to be difficult because when it comes to having two leaders, essentially they'll be listening to each other, they're going to be consider uh, they might even consider each other's opinions, but in the long term, you'll find that two leaders are going to end up making decisions on their own without even confining to the other person. There's going to be little trust for the other person's opinion or, or ideas. And because there's going to be differences between the two, there's going to be a lot of fighting and arguing and a lot of, or, and a lot of bumping heads to decide um, anything from the smallest from the smallest things such as picking out the color of your curtains down to down to finances and what you do with the money normally the matchmaker tends to look for someone that is compatible with you not someone that is going to fit your lifestyle and your status but let's keep watching for someone that was at or above the same income level as me driven, who is ambitious, who is ready for a long-term relationship and ready to get married. She may have actually picked up on the fact that I'm a little high strung. I'm not like a stressed out or anxious person. I'm just high energy or type A. This is who I am. So far, we can see that she is very high strung up, high maintenance. It's not going to take into consideration what the matchmaker has told her so far. It is going to be very rather difficult for her to be with somebody without becoming a headache for someone. The common aspect that girls want in the relationship is the same thing that guys want in a relationship. Most of the time they just both want peace. They want someone that is going to put a smile on their face, not, put a frown, not, not give them a frown, give them a headache, nag and complain to them all the time from them being deciding on things by themselves such as when you typically go home to your house the first thing that you do some people take off their shoes some people don't take off their shoes some people put their bag on the couch on a table on an ice stand on the floor some people wash their hands some people don't wash their hands and when you have somebody else interjecting in your in your space and then questioning your methods of how you enter the house was the first thing you did. Normally, no, nobody wants that. Nobody wants someone picking on their homey lifestyle, the way they live their the way they live their life, and what they do, what they do with their back, what they do with their shoes. And that's just from entering the house. Let alone what else you do. Let, let alone as you go along with your with your home life after work, before work. So when you have somebody that is going to be picking on your life choices and your way of living more than complimenting it by supporting your life choices and, and cheering you on, then that becomes an issue and the relationship tends to be more of a, more of a problematic relationship rather than a compliment. Do I meditate? No. Do mm. I journal? No. Mm. I'm getting flu. No, I'm sorry. No. I'm not even on the same planet as you. When talking about what I didn't like, 
in a man, I said, I could never really be with a beta type man. I mm. specifically used the word doormat. I said, mm. I would shoot him up and spit them out. And her response was, well, I married that type of man. He was saying that, you know, men really like a soft woman and I should try. If you say, if you talk like that about, you talk like that about men, you'll chew them up and spit them out. And even the matchmaker told you I, uh, I married a man like that, a beta man. Well, there's when the group of bikers, there's always going to be one that leads the crowd. Only one gives the direction on where all the bikers are going to be going. If the biker says we're, if the biker signals left, we're all turning left. If the biker uh, make a turns right, we're going to make a right. The biker, if the biker says speed up, or we're going to, or we're going to go single file, we're going to, we're going to interject single file. If you have two leaders and the same biker crowd and they're both giving out different hand signals and they're not going to be the same, it's going to confuse the group and then everyone's going to be going off of different directions, possibly even have an accident and that's not going to be good. Respectful to say that you're going to chew the men up and spit them out. I mean, how, how would it be if it was the other way around and men, men said that, oh, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to chew women up and spit them out. How would that be? That's not going to be very respectful. That's not very gentlemanlike. That's the same way how it's lack of chivalry that men would say that. It's it's not ladylike for a woman to be saying that. And if anything, what makes it even worse than her manners is the fact that it repels men. It repels men, and whenever and because it repels men, it'll make it more difficult for her to find someone to date and someone to be compatible with. Some of these vision board, journaling, meditating type of things. Mm. I could be that type of person. She also said that she could sense I had some walls up, which of course I'm coming mm. to, to find my future husband at the rate of several thousand dollars. Damn. I, of course, I'm going to be here really just trying to interview you my dear friend because i want to know if i'm going to get my money's worth with you so of course i'm going to have some walls up i also think mm. it's perfectly normal to have some walls up when you are meeting someone for the very first time and who mm -hmm. also had not taken the time to do her own research on me by stalking me on the internet what? she definitely didn't have time because she asked for my socials no more than one her to stop uh, to stalk you on the internet normal for someone not to stalk you if you're expecting someone to stalk you then that just screams desperation and that just screams that you have an issue like if you like for example if you ever if you ever had a dentist appointment the dentist isn't going to stalk you and then find out what you've been doing with your teeth or look out your window to make sure if you're brushing and flossing every day that would be weird <laughs> but no, it's not a professional's job to be stalking you. If anything, you present them the issue, and then they then, then they try to help you and fix it. But no, no one's gonna be stalking you. You're, unless she's that lonely that she wants to be stalked and pursued. But like I mentioned, um, with her walls up and her masculine misdemeanor, she's repelling men rather than attracting men. So, since uh, since she's repelling men, nobody is going to be stalking her, which I would say she wants to be pursued. ...own research on me by stalking me on the internet. Really? She definitely didn't have time because she asked for my socials no more than one hour before our meeting. So I asked her if she thought I would be ready for her services. Her response, she essentially said that I am not ready for her type of services because I have too much work to do. My walls are too high. I'm not ready for a long-term committed relationship. At the ripe age of 38, where I have been in therapy for 10 plus years. She also said that I, she's too woo for me, which I can accept that. That's fine. However, I shouldn't need to be a woo type person to be worthy of love. She also said that I need to solve Essentially, I spent $350 to meet with this woman, have her tell me I am not worthy of love as I am. Hopefully you got your money back, but wow, she, 
She told you you have to be softer. She told you you have to work. She told you to be softer. You got to work on yourself. And hopefully she give you your money back. And afterwards, afterwards, just you, uh, it looks like you're just going to do a lot of self-therapy and a lot of self-care. So what it comes down to is just to be softer. And because she has her walls for too high up and she's too masculine, she's not ready. She's not ready for the uh, for the matchmaker. I'm gonna guess that Pari is a matchmaker. Not only does the matchmaker have clients to help them find a match, but she takes existing clients of the opposite sex or even the same sex to match with with women like her. And, and it's basically gonna. And that's how the matchmakers work is getting two clients that they have and then put them together if one if even one of those clients of the match does not work out then it's gonna hurt her it's gonna hurt the matchmaker's reputation they're gonna ask for their money back and it's gonna be very problematic and if it hurts her, their matchmaker's reputation then her, her business will sunk because at the end of the day if there's two if there's two potential matches coming together and it doesn't work out due to one of the matches just not ready to be matched with anyone then it's going to it's going to hurt the it's going to hurt the relationship the other match is going to is going to be depressed and the other is going to get hurt and then the and then they're going to go back to the matchmaker and they're both going to want their money back because it didn't work out and it's going to hurt the business so obviously she was not ready in order for her to be ready, she had to work on herself in a repellent way, but in a feminine attraction way. 38's not bad, honestly. She doesn't look, she doesn't look so bad for 38, but... Huh. It's too bad that she... It's too bad that her... Her attitude's coming off as very tough. ...of love and partnership. Wow. Which, honestly, I think for that reason alone, she should have her matchmaking license taken away because we shouldn't be pushing on these narratives that people are not worthy as they are. No and way. essentially telling women that they, the type of woman they are isn't worthy of love. No that way. is a narrative that should not be given to anyone. This commentary and the fact that she said this to my face had some audacity. No way. Well, we're celebrating my 38th birthday tonight. Yeah. And we are going to wash all of what she said aside. So excited. And we're going to believe that no matter the type of woman you are, love is out there for you. We are not going to listen to this toxic narrative. Not going to disagree that love is out there for everybody. However, because she is not going to take the matchmaker's advice, that just proves the matchmaker was right to not not take her in as a clientele because that means that she was not ready and she was going to be problematic for the mat for another match with a, in a relationship and then it was going to backfire on her and ask for their money back and and her her business so so far the matchmaker was right not to take her in as a client because she would have proven to be uncooperative problematic to the other potential matches as well as not a great fit to the male, to the alpha male role models so she's an alpha female role model there is love out there for everybody but at the same time it's also it is not easy love the love that is out there for everybody is a hard love to get because love requires a lot of effort sacrifice sometimes even pain and then maintaining that love requires a lot of work. But I mean, people, the easy part was getting together. That's the easy part. Maintaining that love and that committed relationship, that's what keeps, that's what requires more hard work, more commitment, and it requires a lot more stress many times. But, but the benefits are great and everybody wants the benefits. Companionship, relationship, love, security, possibly even fa uh, families, families and legacies, and then grow, and then you grow old together. Rather than seeing a matchmaker or seeing this 
or seeing this woman, taking this woman's advice, I would advise anyone that's looking for love, look at the couples that have succeeded. Find, talk to the couples dating at least for two years and then ask them how they do it and ask them and ask them all kinds of questions like what do you do if you if you have a disagreement what do you do if you fight if you're looking for and now if you're looking for marriage i would say talk to a married couple find a married couple that has done it right they've been married for over 10 years 15 years any kind of time frame and ask them what's their key to success how do they do it what are they what happens when there's a disagreement what happens when when friends interject in the relationship what happens when each other's families interject how do they do it ask them take notes the, their opinions and ideas that you may not agree with you may have a different idea of it but just remember um, it's that difference that you have can make or break the relationship because if it breaks the relationship, then you're gonna look back and say, "Oh man, I guess that I guess that guy was right, or that that woman was was right when she mentioned this issue, or when they talked to this friend and they got this friend involved." Yeah, I guess they were right. Because the difference is, because even if there's an age difference and a technological difference, the diff the one difference that does not change when it comes to dating and relationships is the attraction, the romance, and the companionship of people. Because we are all still humans. The, the, the humans that that got married for 10 plus years and did it right, they're just as human, just as much as you and I. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see here, hit that like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow me on social media. If you want some one-on-one -on -one life coaching, send me a DM and I will get back to you. And remember, stay healthy and Ronnie will talk to you later.